Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about hidden costs. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, what are the hidden costs of web development that nobody talks about? Well, I'm very glad that you asked this because there's two things uh, that I would say. One that comes from the perspective of uh, a external stakeholder on your system and one perspective that usually comes from the internal stakeholders someone like say your boss or your manager or something like that or your PO so I'm gonna touch on the two most common ones at least from my perspective so the most common one from an external stakeholder is that software just magically works I don't know how how, how many times I've been in the situation where a stakeholder is f is surprised or completely uh, blown away when there's a bug or say that the system crashes or it's down for some reason things like that and this is kind of hilarious because most people don't understand that why you actually need an entire software team to sustain a fairly high uptime it's actually very complicated. You don't get that if you just buy a simple little sleepy server somewhere on the cloud by a single developer. I've had this with a friend of mine who has n like less than zero understanding of uh, how a computer works. For all he knows, there's a little dinosaur running inside in a wheel. And the uh, uh, we I in this scenario I created a very 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 simple solution for his company where he basically said that it was too expensive to buy the very nice solution with a lot of extra bells and whistles and then he needed to pay a a license fee because uh, well he doesn't know that but I know why because in order to maintain that uptime the company who is giving him all of these services they actually are pay they're paying somebody to to monitor all of these systems and so I told them I'll be give you the simplest possible thing that I can make and let's see if that's good enough you will have to accept though that you may find disruptions in the service or things like that and so said and done we build I build him the simplest thing possible and overall it's a very it's a fairly sustainable solution. It's a tiny little micro instance on Amazon which just has a rebooting policy so if the process or the machine dies it's just gonna reboot itself after a certain amount of time right and this is perfect for me as the maintainer because that means that I don't I can just ship it I don't even have to have any alerting or anything like that because I made it very clear I'm not interested in maintaining your company for you that's on you and so my goal here is to create a solution where I don't have to care and of course it goes down every once in a while and that is not acceptable and the the criticism in that scenario is that oh I think that I thought that you knew what you were doing and the thing is as I explained to to this person I know what I'm doing I'm it's just that you don't know what you're buying and you don't know what the value of the thing that you're that you have is because what you're looking for is not a is such a simple solution as the one that I gave you what you're looking for is something that is going to cost you a lot more and I could set up a more sophisticated solution with the same sort of policies and not have you pay me for it uh, have me have you pay me a licensing fee but if you want to be 100% guaranteed that this thing is going to work close to a hundred percent of the time and also get fixed quicker you're gonna have to pay me a salary basically because that is what it takes in order to do this and that is the thing that uh, an external person doesn't really understand if you buy software you can have two different perspectives either you are buying the software itself from the individual and then you are responsible for what you do with that software or you're buying a service and there's a big difference between the two because a service is going to be a is going to require continuous main continuous maintenance from somebody because at any point in time the load can change on the system uh, there can be a bug there can be tons of things that might go wrong with the system that requires you to look into the issue and that constant monitoring 
is one of the biggest costs to that uh, companies pay in order to have high uptime and things of that nature. Now the other part is going to be the internal thing, which is the cost of cutting corners. And that's something that I think is really, really, f it's interesting and at the same time it takes a long time to track. The example that I'm going to give is, it actually happened to me just yesterday, it was actually, where a one of my, our developers had made a change in uh, in the code and the whole thing blew, blew up and we needed to very quickly, like it was, it was actually discovered uh, in production by more than one of our customers. And so what we had to do was basically to dedicate an entire day, a full work day for three developers to solve this issue because that's how critical the issue was. And then in hindsight, when we kind of had solved the problem, we the this developer who I've, who I've been talking to many times before about the value of investing in end-to-end -end solutions and regression testing and things like that said to me, I don't want to hear, I, very jokingly of course, I don't want to hear any talks about regression testing. He knows that we are moving in that direction. And so I, I say, I wouldn't dream of it for my friend. I would never suggest something so untactful once when we've actually potentially now embarrassed ourselves and lost a bunch of business. My uh, The salespeople were less uh, light about the topic and started asking questions immediately about, okay, wh why did this th has this happen? Well, uh, we should have alerting, we should have all of these other things in order to solve this issue. And I go, well, yes, it's easy for you to say that now. Why, why wasn't all of these things, all these desires from your perspective here six months ago when we built this thing, you know, when I first told you that if you take, if you cut every corner all the time and you just focus on shipping the quickest thing possible all the time and you never invest in improving your platform or maturing your uh, your testing strategy, uh, you weren't really interested in any of that. But now you are when shit hits the fan. And see, this is the hidden cost. This is the thing that you don't understand. The, best, the, the biggest receipt that you can have on that you have been making a lot of uh, really shitty decisions on behalf of your product for a very long time and it's time to start paying that back is when the customers and your stakeholders go from wanting more features and quicker delivery speeds to being upset about the quality of the product. That's the transition that happens. It happens every time. And you don't notice it in the beginning because some system issues and some problems that you make uh, yourself, basically, some of them are gonna come back immediately as an immediate bug and some of them are, are, of them are more like a frog in boiling water. It takes a while before it actually dies. It takes a while before the system really becomes shitty. And this can be on many levels, everything from f how you orchestrate the uh, the features so that if you have a bad basically you have a ba bad architecture where one feature is so coupled to another feature that if one feature changes without the other one accounting for it it actually creates a bug all of these things will happen and you won't notice them at the start because the only thing you think about is how quick you can ship the thing and that is you absolutely useful but the cost of that is that well, later you might actually have to spend a lot more time in this thing than you would have had if you originally designed it right from the first, uh, from uh, from the start. So, what I want you to take away from this is that the hidden cost of web development is usually that a lot of the quick solutions and uh, corner cutting that you do as a uh, software company will come back later. And usually you will spend at least the same sort of time on trying to fix these issues and bugs and then of course you have embarrassments towards your stakeholders and customers. All of these things are going to come. and the But it's going to be such a big time leap between the two that you don't even remember that, oh, the all of these issues came because we made these decisions earlier. And usually the way you know that this thing is now coming back to 
get it to do from you is when you go from wanting new features and shipping as quickly as possible to complaining more than the, uh, more about quality and bugs and things of that nature. That's when the entire organization needs, like it should have happened earlier, but it's usually not possible. That's the time when you really need to start thinking about doing things in a different way. For external stakeholders and customers that you might have, it's almost impossible for them to understand the difference between you giving, selling them software that they are now responsible for taking care of and a service. Because it, in order for you to guarantee uptimes and service quality, you basically need to maintain that system continuously and that is a very it's something that takes a lot of time it's just that for most people they don't even reflect how google and facebook and all these companies i mean it's like just they just set it up right and then that's the whole thing no there are hundreds of developers making sure that the service is available at all times have a great day